lightning fire or frost what type of sork is actually the best do you struggle with that question because that's the problem i'm standing in front of because i want to deep dive the sork as i did the necromancer and right now i'm kind of leaning towards lightning chain lightning because that looks incredible fun what we're going to do today is we'll look at three different builds frost lightning fire and deep dive into them and you in the comments decide essentially what you like and what i should probably play and that will decide my sorcerer journey no worries as soon as we're high level enough we'll try out every single build and give you a deep dive on that first i got a chain lightning sword by dark humility who's essentially just never running out of mana it seems chain lightning people around frost nova to get people locked up Place the Lightning Ultimate Conjuration Super Saiyan spell, collects these crackling energy, which seem to refill his mana periodically. And then with a Barbara Heart, every single Chain Lightning crit gets turned into a miniature explosion, just ripping everyone into pieces. And the best part is he's not using a basic skill. I hate using basic skill to refill my mana. He seems to only be refilling mana with aspects that I don't know yet and with picking up that crackling energy. Let's look at how his build works. And yes, I'll link these guides all in the description below so you can check out if you like one as much as I did. We're using Teleport together with Flame Shield, Frost Nova, the Unstable Currents Ultimate for more Lightning Cast, Ice Armor, and Chain Lightning. Together with a Teleport Enchantment for Evadus Replace with a Short Range Teleport and also Fireball Enchantment because this build is made for 1.1.1 already where Fireball gets buffed. In the skill tree, we're focusing on Chain Lightning together with a Chain Lightning makes Crackling Energy. Then we have Elemental Dominance for casting above 50 mana increases their damage. And you're mostly above 50 mana as I've seen. Then Frost Nova maximum ranked out with Ice Armor, Flame Shield, and Teleport. Frost Nova makes enemies vulnerable as well. Okay, fully with a Glass Cannon and Elemental Attunement for Critical Strikes have up to a 10% chance to reset cooldowns of your defensive skills. Ooh, and then Chain Lightning has a 25% lucky hit chance. Sure, lucky hitting around. We get more lucky hit chance, yes, and then also using a cooldown grants me a barium. That gets followed up by the unstable currents into the more critical strike chance, and then also enemies deal less damage when they are struck by critical strikes with shock skills, and shock skills have up to a 9% chance to stun. So bonus damage, damage reduction, lucky hit, everything. Plus, virus mastery, close enemies take 10% increased damage from your shock skills and deal 20% less damage to you. Ooh, and critical strikes increase these bonuses by 25% for three seconds. Ah, so if we're critical striking people continuously, we actually stick close to them to take less damage and periodically do increased damage to them as well. Hmm, interesting. So you need to be inside of them to actually hurt them. For the gear, we get core and mastery skills cast at or above 100 mana gains 60% plus increased critical strike chance. Okay, that's nice. I mean, that means your first chain lightning or when you're full your chain lightning as you run through a bunch of crackling energies always does a super critical strike for the barber to overcharge and explode everything because there's also the barber heart in here. Then we have the using a cooldown restores. To, oh, that's how you restore mana as a sword. That's super simple. Makes sense. Followed up by chain lightning has a 35% chance to additional two. Okay, that's super cool. Plus the heart for the damage suppression, 20% plus the damage suppression you do anyways. Then critical strike damage increase, but... My other non-critical strike damage does reduce by 25%. Multiplicative, that's okay. So Tempest Hard, we have the Damage Suppression Hard and the Barbar Hard. Then you deal bonus damage multiplicative versus frozen enemies and stunned and immobilized. That's what you get your Frost Nova for. Plus, distant enemies have an 8% chance to be stunned, but you deal 40% increased damage to stunned enemies. Wow. Yes, that makes super sense here. Just stun them with your lightning skills and then frost over them and stun them. And it was quite nice. Uh, Flame Shit lets you move through enemies and immobilize them for the bonus immobilized damage. Plus, gain additional charge of frost nova. Critical strikes increase attack speed. Super good. Taking direct damage has a chance to reset defensive skill cooldown so you can get more mana. And then disobedience for more armor in general. And in total, we have cooldown reduction, cooldown reduction. There was essence generation, critical strike chance. Ranks to teleport and frost nova on the boots. What? That's possible? That's amazing. Oh, I, 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 I want this for my for my necro, please. Now that chain lighting looked absolutely incredible and I'm already in love with it. So like, forget the rest of the video. No. What about Frost though? I heard Blizzard is insane. So we get this level 98 player in Atkins grass right now, just doing blizzards. <laughs> okay, teleport in, stun everyone, Barbara Heart, just blizzards raining down, deep freeze, getting people completely oblivious. That's it? No basic skills, nothing. That looks kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. I mean, see, there, there's someone that explodes. Let's let's go a little bit back. That's a bunch of elites, right? So 
stun them together lose hp but he goes into deep freeze so he can't take damage everyone gets just exploded they shoot at him he stays into the deep freeze then frost nova people get them stunned more blizzard just raining down while they are stunned that's four elites in a tier one this is a tier 100 dungeon right the barrier is up and didn't take a single damage uh like goes around to then teleport over uh, yeah i have k blizzard sork kind of kind of nice i mean less hands-on than the lightning chain lightning more like hands off but i yeah I, I that looks fun skill tree wise having two in firebolt then maximum ice charts with the enhanced ice charts we have a lot of points in all the defensive skills so flame shield uh, we get teleporter boosted there's ice armor there's frost nova with 12 points then also you get the barrier when using your stuff and you spend 100 mana you gain damage reduction so insane damage reduction plus you have very active you apply more chill and then blizzard when cast above 50 increase and blizzard deals damage versus frozen more we have the deep freeze and then we have six points into increased damage to chill and 36 increased to wow. why not that a cool damage against vulnerables ah you don't need the mana i see you deal increased cold damage to vulnerable enemies cool and frost skills deal 50 cool i mean like that's a lot of damage bonus plus last but not least your frost skills have up to a 10 percent chance to make your next cast of ice charts frozen orb or blizzard consume no mana and deal 40 percent increased damage chances doubled against vulnerable Ooh, so 20 percent against vulnerable but that has a two percent lucky hit chance that has a 33 percent we get frost nova with no lucky hit teleport has a 65 percent. so so teleport is your lucky hit you teleport in rainment pull everything together stun them and then cast your blizzard with the double damage 40 percent more if that works i like that so what do we have we have deep freeze is making ice spikes and ice spikes have a chance to explode and the amulet makes blizzard also do ice spikes and ice spikes do bonus damage to frozen enemies oh so if i deep freeze while a blizzard is running then both create ice spikes that each have an effect on each okay cool 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 so ice spikes in general get boosted and yeah nice and then cooldowns restore mana ice charts pre-earth enemies you get increased damage while barrier and we have constant barrier you deal 40 percent more damage against unstoppable but we also increase our crowd control duration on the frost nova and everything disobedience for armor chance versus bonus damage versus immobilized stunned or frozen and that works really good with the duration increase on frost nova teleport with raymond of the infinite to pull everything together stun them and get the cooldown Raymond of the Infinite to teleport, stun everyone, pull them together, and then Frost Nova gains an additional charge that's really good with the increased of crowd control duration. That's quite cool. That works nice into each other. You go for critical strike, critical strike. We have the Barbara Heart as well. There is the unique element. Oh, there's Tarasha's Hearts. For each unique element you deal damage with, you deal 12% increased damage. And that's why we have teleport, which is lightning, correct? Shock. Then we have frost and we have fire. Huh. Yeah. And that that would boost our damage for the triple followed up by 20 percent damage reduction and a fire explosion which would also be fire damage again as soon as we use the defensive skill hmm like what i see here it's quite quite the package no worries though we also have an incredible fire build yes i looked that up beforehand this is a tier 100 to clear and it's completely different to what i've seen before because all of these builds use quite some defensive skills right but there's these level 89 hydra bolt sword what i see here is vastly different because there is no defensive skills i mean there's frost nova but no no flame shield no ice armor no nothing so not a hardcore build and it's only going for like maximum amount of fire damage i mean you have the hydra you have the dead because you don't have the defensive skills and that is the thing about this build you have the conjuration snake to pull everything together well okay there is flame shield there is flame shield but this build just does damage as it seems i mean it's very similar to like how Necro plays because again Necro actually doesn't have defensive skills really <laughs> I mean we have our blood mist to get out of danger and that's about it but this build is extremely risky I mean I like the damage I see but the other builds seem just way more convenient to play but it, I, I like the fantasy of being a full fire damage person and this is also level 89 to consider so this is not a tier 100 being cleared by 100 like the frost Sork or level 98 this is 89 and he's still doing it quite nicely i mean with probably the riskiest builds he could be going for but oh he pulls everything together so they can't actually push him so that's his defense and then there's like quite some damage coming in with a barber horn i mean i haven't seen a 50 million but yeah he's overburned oh that was a 6 million 
cool. Okay, how does this work? We're using Hydra together with Lightning Spear, Frost Nova, Inferno, Firebolt, and Flame Shield with a Fireball Enchantment and the Firebolt Enchantment. Then we also have Tarasha's Heart because we have Lightning, we have Hydra, a Fire, and we have Frost Damage. Okay, together with the Barber and also Revenge for the Damage Reduction. On the skill tree, we're leveling up the Fireball to completely, and we have all the points in. The same goes for the Fireball for Greater Fireball. Then there is the Flaming Shield boosted up together with Glass Cannon and Frost Nova. We have the points in Hydra. We also do bonus damage the more Conjurations we have up, and that's the Lightning Spear together with the Hydra and the Double Hydra, I assume. All our Fire Damage to increase Burning Damage Multiplicative. That's quite nice. The Inferno with Inferno Pulse together, but we don't care about our No Mana cost. Because we don't really use mana, as it seems. And then we have also a heal while enemies are burning. Huh. So I guess that's our defensive skill, right? Because we're just healing. And then last one, at least, which is really interesting. Shatter after freeze expires, enemies explode for 25% of the damage you dealt with them while frozen. So the plan is to probably frost nova enemies, then overload them with fire damage and have them explode. Where the barber explodes them, the frost explodes them as well. On the gear, we have enemies are affected by more damage over time than their total life. You deal 40% increased burning damage to them. Ooh. So if they're already burning, they burn even harder. Fantastic. You have additional Hydra. Yes. You may have an additional Hydra. Yes. Then skills deal up to bonus damage based on your primary resource when cast. Okay, full mana cast on the flame snake pulling together super damage and the Hydra in general. Then bonus damage against frozen or stunned or immobilized. We can stun them or freeze them with a frost nova. Basic skills get more attack speed, so you can spam your Firebolt. Then your lucky hit chance is increased with Barrier Active. You gain more armor. We have critical strike chance against injured, but also my crowd control duration is increased. Ah, together with this, we have double crowd control duration increase, so that the Frost Nova is staying the longest, followed up by damage reduction with the basic skills so we don't die. This is so vastly different. Ranks to Hydra on the helmet, yes. Then all the other builds. Wow. I have to say, right now, the fire looks fun, but that's more like for really the pyromanic enthusiast. I do prefer the lightning or the frost so far, but probably there are also different fireballs out there that I didn't check yet. So if you have anything to recommend, definitely post it in the comments below. Also, tell me what you're playing and what do you think I should play. Don't worry, though, I'll deep dive into everything Sork related as I did with the Necro, because... Well, I just like to understand things and all the synergies. So we'll probably play every single build in the long run. But right now I'm leaning to lightning for leveling. If you're now interested to see what I actually did with Necro, if you don't know my content yet, there's a very good Tempest Necromancer or an Infinity Mist build that just zooms through dungeons like there's no tomorrow.